that's it then. Testing is over and the next event is the season opener in Australia on the 25th of March. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be rounding up the final day of F1 2018 testing. And it was another Ferrari at the front. The fourth day out of eight that Ferrari were at the front. Does this mean that they're the favourites for the championship? Well, up and down the grid, it doesn't look like it. It looks like Mercedes are still the favourites. However, my review of full testing and my sort of reaction and response to my initial predictions video will be coming out tomorrow on Saturday. So look out for that if you want to see who I think will be winning the World Championship, who's had the best testing, who's had the worst. But today, or today's topic of conversation, is day eight of F1 2018 testing. And as I said, it was a Ferrari at the front, but it was someone new. Kimi Raikkonen was at the top of testing for the first time this season with a 117.2. Very, very good effort from Kimi. The second best lap we've seen in testing overall. Very good job there on the Hypersofts. Second was Fernando Alonso with a 1 minute 17.7 on the Hypersofts. Good job that from Fernando. Pretty solid run in today from McLaren. 87 laps completed from Alonso. However, he did break down near the end of the session once again with what appears to be an oil leak. And what an awful second week they've had. The first day, you're begging that they can have a better week than the first day of this week. The second day, hit with more issues. You think, oh my God, the final two days, clean running and they'll be okay. Yesterday, solid running from Van Dorn. And today, okay running from Alonso but it's not the preseason they wanted but fingers crossed that all the issues are done now and not during the season. In third place on the final day of testing was Carlos Sainz for Renault a 118.0 he was also on the Hypersoft about a second slower than Sebastian Vettel was yesterday a solid job from Renault who I've said it last week I've said it this week They've looked good this week, and last week. <laughs> They've looked solid. They've looked like they're miles ahead of last season, and they look like a team to me that can be fighting for podiums if all goes their way. I think it's very clear that we've got some front runners, midfield, and no back markers. I think that's definitely the case. And Renault, I think, will be leading the charge of the midfield they'll be in that sort of gap between the midfield and the front runners and a third place in testing although sandbagging still is taking place on the final day for science that's a good confidence booster not that he needs it at all he's a fantastic driver carlos science but renault a really solid end to testing a really solid winter testing overall in fourth place was daniel ricardo with a woman at 18 3 in fifth was Roman Grosjean with a 118.4. Good effort that from Grosjean. He's had limited running in testing, the same as Raikkonen, and both of those have not had a lot of testing at all. However, both of them today, and Haas overall the past couple of days, very solid. They were one of the teams last week I said were not good enough and they needed to push harder this season. And I did predict earlier on that they'd be at the back and I think that still could be the case but solid the past couple of days. Being second yesterday, fifth today, good, good effort from the Haas boys. Sixth was Valtteri Bottas for Mercedes. Both Mercedes were out today. Seventh was Brendan Hartley in that Toro Rosso Honda, performing very well, the Honda engine by the look of it. Still looks like it's behind the Renault, the Mercedes, the Ferrari engine, but it looks like it's closed up the gap quite a bit and maybe Honda will be eating their own words very shortly, who knows? But after a very, very solid test for Honda and a very poor test for McLaren, it certainly could go that way. And Toro Rosso could be ahead of McLaren. Eighth was Esteban Ocon for Force India. Again, who knows what's happening at that team. Awful, awful testing. Rebranding going on in the background. Ocon and Perez seem very chipper this week. That's certainly for sure. But the times, the scores on the boards. Ah, uh, meh. That's all I can say, they weren't stupid noises, it's just a meh. It really is for Force India and it's 
a shame it really is. Ninth was Leclerc for Sauber Ferrari or Alfa Romeo Sauber, whatever you want to call them. Leclerc is one who I haven't been over positive about this testing season. Uh, before testing, I really was, but since we've got here, he's looked okay. The Sauber, I thought, would be higher up, judging the times. Only one of the days they were in that top five, and that was Marcus Ericsson. But the rest of the days, they've been at the back of the times. Today, they're on the Hypersofts, two seconds slower than Kimi Raikkonen. That's not awful, you might be thinking, but on the final day, I would have liked to have seen them a bit closer. But they're still head of a Mercedes in Lewis Hamilton, so that's a positive. Tenth was Sergei Sorokin for Williams. He's also not looked very impressive at all over the winter, but once again, I'll stress it, stress it for a final time before testing ends. Sandbagging is in play. We have no idea the real pace of these cars. Yesterday is definitely the best indicator of how the field's going to look, but it's not perfect by any means. Definitely, definitely not. In second to last place was Lewis Hamilton on the final day of testing. The Brit had a 1 minute 19.4 time, but he was on the super soft tyre, so nowhere near as quick as those on the ultras or hyper softs, although Sorokin was on the soft tyre, so a compound harder than Hamilton, so very interesting there. And at the rear of the field was Lance Stroll, also in the Williams, with the 199 also on the soft tyre, so I'm actually going to take back what I said about Sorokin there. Yes, he hasn't had a very particularly impressive testing session, but Williams today definitely were holding back, and I, I just want to make that little amendment there before we get the Sorokin haters on us. However, I don't think there's too many of them. I think I'm even one of the more positive Sorokin fans, if, if you will. I think he's definitely got potential, although I have said I think he'll be out by the end of the season. I think potential is there, I don't think he'll be the best on the grid. I don't think he'll be the worst by any means. So Sorokin, fingers crossed he does well, of course. But it's 50-50. It really is. And, and that's the end of testing. That's it all done and dusted. Two weeks of F1 goodness. And now we've only got a short wait until the 25th of March. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It's really good. F1 is back, baby. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Tomorrow... I'm planning on doing my review of testing, my review of my predictions. Also at the weekend, I want to do my Formula 2 testing roundup. It's been their first testing session of the season this week. And then before the season starts, I've got a few bits and bobs I want to get out, including another documentary. Uh, you guys were really, really positive about the first one, and if you don't know what that is, that was my Who's Gonna Replace Kimi Raikkonen video. And then I'm gonna do an F1 beginner's guide for the season. I'm 100% sure all of you who are watching a testing video probably won't want to watch that. You probably know what mostly what's on there, but that's just my little plan before the beginning of the season. We've got a Formula E race in that time as well in Punta del Este in Uruguay. But guys, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video, the final day of F1 testing 2018. Like, subscribe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.